What's going on guys, Killer6 back with another hot fix video for you for Borderlands 3 and today is April 2nd, 2020 and we got some big stuff today. We got buffs for Moe's, we got buffs for some more weapons, and we got a nerf to the lob. More on that in just a second. Today we'll release a hot fix for Borderlands 3 which will be live on all platforms by 12 noon Pacific. That is by 12 noon Pacific, it's not at 12 noon Pacific, I get that all the time. This hotfix begins two new events, Slot Machine Mania, Trials Take All. This also includes some buffs to the gunner, weapon balance, and addressing reported community concerns. To apply the hotfixes, you wait at the main menu until you see the sign that says hotfix is applied. Please, God, wait for that sign. <laughs> if you're experiencing any issues or you want to provide any feedback, please submit a ticket to support.2k.com. All right, let's dive into what's going on. So first and foremost, today ends the event where you can get legendaries from vending machines. Those were a lot of fun. I was able to get some really cool stuff by that. And today also begins the slot machine mania and the trials take all. Now slot machine mania is, this is how they describe it. They say it pays out big time. There's an increased chance to win legendary gear from slot machines but also an increased chance for grenades to spawn from the uh, slot machines because who doesn't like a little risk? Now it says there is still a chance for other loot to drop, but the rate has been reduced so you can win legendaries and take damage. The next one, Trials Take All. This one's actually pretty big and a lot of people might not even realize how important this is, but this one is going to boost the rewards awarded during Proving Grounds trials and bosses in the Proving Grounds will have a 100% chance to drop loot from their pools during this event. So what this means is for all you Zane mains who don't have the DLC, you need to go get the anti-freeze. Uh, also flak mains, if you guys have been waiting to try and get your uh, rack pack class mod, now is the perfect time because dude's gonna drop it every time. So now's a great time to go find a perfect one. There's also other rewards in the Proven Grounds that you can go get. Those are the two main ones that I would say are the ones that I'm going to focus on uh, during this event. All right, um, the slot machine mania event and the trials take all event uh, will last until 9 a.m. Pacific time on April 9th. So we got about a week uh, to get those done. Well, exactly a week. Uh, now they have adjusted the pearl of ineffable knowledge to do 90% damage and they've updated the item description to show the correct value. If you guys don't know, the Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge is a relic, an artifact that you get from uh, Claptrap while doing DLC 2. You get it just by doing the story of DLC 2. There's nothing complicated about it. That said, you can only get it once per playthrough. So whatever stats it rolls with, you're stuck with those. But here's the thing. <laughs> It was so powerful that this was kind of expected. Um, it was basically, it was doing like upwards of 150 plus damage, uh, percent damage. It's still technically more than what it was supposed to be doing. So in a way, it's kind of a buff. <laughs> if you want to like look at it that way, you know, glass half full, I guess. <laughs> All right, now they've also addressed a reported concern that the Siren Stone class mod was sometimes increasing damage taken instead of decreasing damage taken. This is big. And this was a nice, fast change man this is one of those things that um several people reported to them like basically the day that the the dlc came out and they've already jumped in and fixed it so that's good to see all right now the big one uh in terms of buffs in my opinion adjustments for mose the gunner uh they say that they've been taking a closer look at mose over the last few weeks here are the first set of hot fixes that's what they said the first set of hot fixes based on those investigations, primarily focused on improving her survivability. We will be further addressing some areas we identified as trouble spots for her in the future. So they're not done with Moe's yet. This is a really good first step. So they've reduced the cooldown time for Iron Bear, which is good. The cool thing about Moe's is if you're taking dot damage or you realize you're about to die, you can boom, hit your action skill, get into Iron Bear and survive. So that's cool that they've increased the cooldown time for that. That means you can get in there faster. You can have more survivability. Boom, right off the bat, big survivability change right there. So thank you. Next, they've increased the amount of fuel for Iron Bear, which means that once you get into Iron Bear, it's going to last longer, so even better. They have increased the bonus on Behind the Iron Curtain skill. Behind the Iron Curtain is a uh, skill in the red tree, the Shield of Retribution tree, that states Moses' shield recharge delay is reduced and her shield recharge rate is increased. So originally the default stats on that were shield recharge delay, negative 7%, and shield recharge rate plus 7%. So we're going to see where that goes to after this 
buff. Up next, they've increased the bonus on Security Bear skill. Now, Security Bear is a bubble shield that will reduce incoming damage taken. Uh, the shield will deactivate if it sustains too much damage, reactivating after a short cooldown. The original base stat on this thing was 50% of Iron Bear maximum health is added as shields, and the bubble recharge delay was five seconds. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with that once the actual uh, change comes through and we can see the stats on it. Up next, experimental munitions. Now, this one is another one in the red tree. So, so far they've they've focused on the red tree, which is as her main survivability tree. Anyhow, that's the one where she gets all of her shield increases and all that stuff. But experimental munitions, on the other hand, deals with damage. Uh, whenever Moe's and Iron Bear score a critical hit, they deal bonus incendiary damage. Now the default stat on that was 10% of damage dealt, you'll get bonus incendiary damage. So it'll be interesting to see once again, where they go with this in terms of the, uh, the bonus on that. Now, in terms of some weapon balance, they state here, uh, and they say balance because there's one nerf coming up. Uh, they have increased the weapon damage on the damned. The damned is an assault rifle, a Vladoff assault rifle that you get from the agonizer. Uh, it's been subpar for quite some time. So I'm hoping that we get a, a pretty huge boost on that thing. They've also increased the amount of damage weapon shields absorb on Hyperion weapon shields. So if you've ever used any Hyperion guns and you've uh, noticed that the shields don't seem to work very well, they've increased the amount of damage that those shields can now take. The TIGS Boom, they've increased the weapon damage on the TIGS Boom and they've increased the damage from the Starfall Meteors. So um, the TIGS Boom was actually not horrible on Moe's, but on other characters, maybe not so great. So hopefully that one gets some pretty nice boost. The Moonfire, this pistol is extremely powerful if you can hit crits. Uh, if you're not hitting crits, you're just in body shots, this thing feels weak as hell. But what they've stated for this one is they're increasing the weapon damage and increasing the critical damage bonus. So, this thing has the potential to become one of the better pistols, depending on how much they increase this stuff by. The good juju, non-critical hits, will now increase the critical damage bonus by 20%. This bonus stacks 25 times and is removed upon manual reload. This sounds like the assault rifle version of the Anarchy shotgun from DLC 2. This sounds extremely powerful, and I'm not sure yet how powerful it is, but I can't wait to find out. The Good Juju is a Mayhem 4 exclusive that you can only get from the Rampager. Uh, I believe, Can you, you might also be able to get it from Wotan. I'm not entirely sure on that, but I know for a fact that you can get it on Mayhem 4 from the Rampager. I've gotten several of them that way. All right, and the one that you guys probably tuned in for, the Lob. Now, they've increased the fire rate on the Lob, but they've reduced the projectiles from three to one. Now, what that means is, yes, it's nerfed, but if you can shoot the Lob faster, then this could still be one of the best weapons in the game. And I know that's like the craziest thing in the world to hear after the lob was the laughing stock of Borderlands 3 for like five months, but the lob could still be one of the best weapons even after this nerf. So I can't wait to see these changes actually hit. And uh, usually they hit, you know, between like say noon Eastern to 2 p.m. Eastern. So, you know, tune in today, like hop on, uh, check it out. Uh, and if you guys did not know me and Jolt's Dude 139 are doing a playthrough over on twitch.tv. If you guys want to come check that out, it's just twitch.tv slash killer six. There is a link down in the description below. You can click on that. Just hit the follow button. It's like a little heart thing at the top of Twitch cost you nothing to follow and uh, you can come watch us play live every day so i hope you guys enjoyed this look at today's hot fix notes if you did thumbs up would be especially appreciated if you haven't already hit that follow button it's completely free i cover item guides i cover all the hot fixes and patch notes top tens all the good stuff man and uh hope to see you guys in the next video y'all have a great day